Now, I talked a moment about NAFTA. What about permanent normal trade relations with China? I don't think I have to elaborate on the fact that when Americans go shopping, they walk into a department store, just look at the labels. Look at where the products are manufactured. And time after time after time, where the products come from is China. China and China. As unbelievable as it may sound, Madam President, back in 1999 and 2000, we were told, this is again what we were told, is that permanent normal trade relations with China would open up the huge Chinese market to all kinds of American-made products. The argument was, look, China is the largest country in the world. And if we could just have an unfettered free trade agreement with them, think about all of the products manufactured in America that would be sold to the huge population in China. That was the argument. I think it is important for the American people to hear what the supporters of permanent normal trade relations with China, free trade with China, had to say back then and whether those arguments turned out to be right or not. In other words, if we're going to look at TPP today and hear what people are saying now, it's important to hear what people said about these other free trade agreements back then. Here is what President Bill Clinton said about PNCR with China back in 1999. Quote, in opening the economy of China, the agreement will create unprecedented opportunities for American farmers, workers, and companies to compete successfully in China's market. This is a hundred to nothing deal for America when it comes to the economic consequences, end of quote, President Bill Clinton. In addition, the conservative economists at the Cato Institute, very conservative think tank, this is what they wrote back in 1999, and I quote, the silliest argument against PNTR, free trade with China, is that Chinese imports would overwhelm U.S. industry. In fact, American workers are far more productive than their Chinese counterparts. PNTR would create far more export opportunities for American, for American than Chinese concerns, ends of quote. In other words, you had a liberal president, President Clinton, saying PNTR with China would open up great economic opportunities in America, create new jobs, raise wages. You had a conservative think tank say exactly the same thing. All again, you had all of corporate America, all of Wall Street, all of the big money interests saying, oh boy, what a great opportunity for the United States. We can create all these jobs. Well, were they right? Were they wrong? Well, I think everybody knows. Facts are pretty clear. They were, once again, not wrong. They were dead wrong. Economic Policy Institute has estimated that PNTR with China has led to the loss, to the, led to the net loss of over 2. million American jobs. The trade deficit with China has increased from 83 billion back in 2001 to a record-breaking $342 billion in 2014. I note that my Republican colleagues often talk about our national deficit, which is an important issue. I don't hear much discussion about our huge trade deficit, especially with China, which is now at $342 billion in 2014. Mr. President, after all of the talk on the floor of the Senate and the floor of the House, after all of the editorials written in the major newspapers throughout our country, after all of the discussion and expositions of Wall Street and the big money interest, it turned out that the trade agreement with China was an unmitigated disaster for American workers. PNTR was passed in the year 2000. A couple of years later, and this kind of tells you everything you need to know about unfettered free trade, Jeffrey Inmelt, the CEO of General Electric, one of our large corporations, 
was quoted on this subject at an investor meeting just one year after China was admitted to the World Trade Organization. And this is what uh, Mr. Inmelt said, and I quote, when I am talking to GE managers, I talk China, 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 China. You need to be there. You need to change the way people talk about it and how they get there. I am a nut on China. Outsourcing from China is going to grow to five billion. We are building a tech center in China. Every discussion today has to center on China. The cost basis is extremely attractive. You can take an 18 cubic foot refrigerator, make it in China, land it in the United States, and land it for less than we can make an 18 cubic foot refrigerator today ourselves." End of quote. What Mr. Inmelt is saying is what virtually every major corporation CEO was thinking. And again, it's not hard to understand why. In China, wages are very, very low. Environmental regulations are almost non-existent. Hard to find a free trade union to negotiate for their workers. Why wouldn't a company shut down in America and run to China? And that is exactly, of course, what they have done. Mr. Pre Madam President, before PNTR with China passed, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce told us that it would create jobs. But just a few years later, on July 1st, 2004, the Associated Press ran an article with the headline, quote, Chamber of Commerce leader advocates offshoring of jobs, end of quote. And here is what the article stated. U.S. Chamber of Commerce President and CEO Thomas Donahue, who, by the way, yesterday was before the Senate Finance Committee advocating for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, <clears throat> this is what the AP article said back in 2004, that Mr. Donahue urged American companies to send jobs overseas as a way to boost American competitiveness. Donahue said that exporting high-paid tech jobs to low-cost countries such as India, China, and Russia saves company money." End of quote. So the dirty secret is that, of course, these guys like these free trade agreements, not because they're going to create jobs in America. No one seriously believes that. When they're honest about it, they understand and they say that if companies move abroad, shut down plants in America, throw millions of people onto the streets in this country, that when they do that, their profits are going to go up. And they are right. I give them credit for that. That is right. And that is what unfettered free trade has meant in this country. And on and on it goes. It is not just Mr. Inmelt, the head of General Electric. It is not just Mr. Donahue, uh, the uh, head of the Chamber of Commerce. It is major corporation after major corporation. It is Wall Street. It is all of the moneyed interest.